everybody. We're here at happy hour from the Columbia River, Savi Island. And the reason we're doing this video, it's kind of a wrap up to our camping trip. And I've received several questions about Penny and why we chose to go to the van. And so I thought it would be a good chance for G and I to give you our history. There is no wrong choice when it comes to RVs. It's just how it fits your life. Well, RVs uh, are different for every person. You know, it's got to fit their lifestyle, uh, what they're doing, and sometimes things change. Like in our case, you know, we did the travel trailer and now we got the tiny home, so things have changed. Things have changed. So to give you a little history and to help you with your own decisions, because I know some of you are anticipating retirement and what you might want to do in retirement. Our very first camping vehicle belonged to my parents and we went on our honeymoon and it was a tent trailer. Yeah, a very small tent trailer. Yeah, like, like we couldn't sleep together even on it because then it would tip over. It was, we had to be on either side uh, on our honeymoon. No bathroom, no kitchen. No. Nope. Yeah, but we had a great Great honeymoon. So our lives started camping. Yeah. Our lives together, we started camping. And then we went to fast forward a few years, and I was working shift work, and G was working Monday through Friday. And so to alleviate the sound issue in our home, we went to a cab over camper. Yeah. I took the kids to a camping ground, and we got to sleep, and Yes. Get ready for your next shift. So that worked uh, for at that moment in our lives because it was just him and one child, our oldest, uh -huh. and they would go camping. And uh, so the cab over camper was great. And then we went on to a 15 foot trailer. 15 foot trailer. And that actually, someone had done something like a reno on the inside, and there was a bunk bed that. Uh, folded down uh -huh. and by then our oldest was out of the house and we had our youngest with us and he slept on that upper bunk yeah and when he got into that bunk it started creaking and we were thinking oh my goodness I hope that holds <laughs> yeah you have to know that that child is six five and he was a tall child uh, so after that so you can see the trend we picked um, RVs, different types to fit the place we were in our life. And no one was the wrong choice, it was just we were moving on. So after that 15 foot trailer, what did we do? Um, we actually went to another trailer. We went to an 18 foot. An 18 foot trailer. Boy, I barely remember that one. Yeah. And. I can't even remember what to say about that one because I don't remember that one. No, too it, well. it wasn't that great. That's the one I took to the desert. Oh yes, yes, that one. Well, you did a lot of boondocking with that one. Yeah. Yeah, because you go out east. That was fun, though. It was fun. It was fun. Uh, we didn't take it on the road long distance, though. It was mainly just because we live in a camping mecca and you would just mostly go out in the desert. Yeah. Yeah, on BLM land. Then from that one, what kind of sleeping arrangements did that one have? That, that had uh, the two twin beds. I loved that one. <laughs> that was right. It had the Lucy and Desi beds, and that worked really good because, especially when you have a dog, that dog likes to sleep you know, he wants to be as close to his peeps as possible. And so he could sleep in between the beds. And then from that we went to the view, right? Yeah, we went to the motorhome. The view, which, you know, was bigger than Penny. Right. Had a slide out and it was longer. Right. And it had its uh, positives and negatives. Yes, and the view, uh, it's a Winnebago view, so if you Google that, you'll see what it looks like. It, um, we couldn't sleep together in that view because 
it would require me to climb up and be on the other side of G in the sleeping bed over the top of the driving. And so I would have to get up and go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. I would have to climb over him and climb down the ladder and then go to the restroom. So I slept on the jackknife couch, which was not comfortable per se, but it worked for us for a, a long time. And we had a great time in that. But we decided at that point that we were kind of done with the slides because uh, you can you can understand that when, although a slide provides you with this awesome living space, RVs per se are meant to be used for camping, which means that slide at the most is supposed to come in and out, you know, maybe, maybe... Six weeks a year. Six weeks a year. But when you're living in it, when you're really wanting to travel a lot, and you're putting that slide in and out, that motor can have an issue. And we did have, with the design of our slide, have one issue with it. And it just turned me off to the concept of the slide. And I know some of you will want the slide, and there's nothing wrong with wanting the slide. But know, it, know that it is another motor. And it's something to go wrong. And it's something to go wrong. And but there was a lot to that view that we loved. Yeah. But that view did not fit in a parking space. It was wide enough that we would take up two parking spaces and the length was long enough that you would hang over. So parking or traveling through small city streets was a bit of a challenge. Of course, it was a challenge for G because I did no driving in that, yeah. except for one time. And um, but there was a lot to love about it. We just knew that. Um, well, really, what happened was we found that we wanted to sightsee a lot more, and we weren't into having a motorhome that you tow a tow vehicle, a tow behind you. Uh, because then that makes it even longer and then you have more issues getting in and out of grocery store parking lots and you, you just have to plan a whole lot more and so we would rent cars to go sightseeing and so that added expense it was worth it but it was an added expense and so in our ever moving evolution we decided to go back to a trailer a small trailer and that trailer was great in a lot of ways so you can see that the theme here is there's positives and negatives to all of it yeah. but if your lifestyle is where you don't stay more than two days in one spot you're constantly picking up and moving you want to be a little bit more spont spontaneity be able to you know get up and go quickly and we we found out that the trailer just wasn't doing that for us and we're only getting older yeah and so you know the hooking on the trailer even though now they had moved to motorized hitches uh, but there's still things about trailer life that are physically taxing yeah and you have to level the trailer every spot to go to yeah because the refrigerator will pack up and not Working. Right, you have to level that trailer to get your fridge to work. It, but it was a great, great trailer. That Creekside is a very good brand of trailer. And it had a bed that you could walk around. I liked that. But the seating was only in a bench seat, which also doubled as your dining table. And that uh, wasn't as comfortable as we would have liked. And we were pining for the seating and the view. Yeah. You know, those uh, drivers and passenger seat turned around. It, it was just like a living room. Yeah. So then we come to this latest decision. And we hope it's our last one, but you never know. Our criteria was comfortable sleeping 
And when we looked at the history of our, our different vehicles, we liked that trailer that had the Lucy and Desi bed. Yeah, the twin beds. The twin beds. And we liked um, that it was light. We loved the passenger and driver seat turning around. So it was like having those stressless chairs on the road. Uh -huh. And uh, so the Winnebago 59K met all of our wants and there really is no negative. It had all of the positives of our Winnebago view without any of the negatives. Yeah. Plus the twin beds with the trailer. Right, and we love those twin beds. So this has been our shakedown cruise and as you will find if you are just venturing into the RV industry or you've already been in it forever, you know that you are the quality assurance for every vehicle. They do not have quality assurance at the factory. So this is where you go out and you find out the little things that aren't quite right. And in every one we found something that wasn't hooked right or didn't run right. And, yeah. you know. Yeah, so I don't know if we got our list going on any, but I think once it's done, I think it's going to be nice. I especially love the, the solar power. The solar power keeps the batteries charged. And that's one thing that really you're constantly worried about on all the rigs is keeping the batteries charged, even in storage. And uh, that, that's really a plus for me. Right. And I have to say the wet bath is awesome because uh, <laughs> I can sit on the toilet and shave my legs. <laughs> I can actually wash the toilet while I'm taking a shower. I mean, it all sounds weird, but it's very, very efficient and very comfortable. So um, that wet bath is perfect. I think we'll be on the road quite a bit with this, this rig. Yeah, this rig is very quick and easy to get into and go. You know, you can get there. I can get probably two, three parking spots from the quilt chop. Yeah. And I think is a plus. Huh? That's a plus. I can kick back and watch TV while she's shopping. And... <laughs> he can he can take a nap. He can eat a dinner. <laughs> he has a restroom. Yeah. Everything right there while I'm shopping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and those, I can't tell you enough about those seats that turn around. The, it's the best comfortable stitching stitching chair you could have and the lighting is really really good and another thing about it is she can drive it I can drive it whereas you know the trailer and pickup I did not want to drive that yeah that was not a nor did I want to back that up and I know there are a lot of girls out there that have no problems with that and I am all about giving you kudos but for me this is, this is the rig I can just, uh, if for some reason I had to, you know, put it back together and hit the road, I could do that. Yeah. And that's kind of a comfort to both of us, you know. And, and if he ever gets tired and not so worried about my driving, I could just drive it while he took a nap. Uh, well, I'll have to think <laughs> about that one. <laughs> so... This shakedown cruise on Savi Island has been extraordinary and we have loved every minute of our view here watching the, the ships go by and it was um, just a, a very sweet comfortable spot and I, I've made new friends at the cross stitch shop and at the quilting shop in St. Helens and um, we definitely are coming back here again. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So I hope that answered the questions uh, that you're curious about. Just know again, there is no perfect RV. There is only the perfect RV for your time in life. And the choices are never wrong because as you move through this life, you can change and choose a new RV. And we definitely have. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you, thank you for hanging out with us. We'll see you soon.
Thanks for watching. And be sure to like and subscribe on Quilt Roadies. Mm -hmm.